Hi, I'm Norman Wahlberger, and we're here at the University of New South Wales. This is chapter four of our linear algebra course. This is linear equations and matrices. And the main idea is Gaussian elimination or row reduction to solve a system of linear equations. This is a very important fundamental operation in linear algebra that is used for all kinds of problems. So here's problem 14, part E. We have these three equations in three variables, x1, x2, x3. And we have to solve the system. All right, so the first thing that we have to do is make an augmented matrix. So we'll do that here. We'll write down the augmented matrix for this system, which is a more efficient way of writing down the information where we uh, just encode all the coefficients that are appearing. So we start with the first row, which has coefficients 1, 2, 4. Then we'll draw a line. And on this right-hand side here, we'll uh, put the 10. So that's the first equation encoded in that row. Then the second equation, we have minus 3, 3, 15, and 15 on the right-hand side. And for the third equation, minus 2, minus 1, 1, and minus 5. All right, so this is the augmented matrix for this system of equations. And now we're going to perform row reduction on this to get it into a row echelon form. That's a particularly simple form which will allow us to read off solutions. All right, so let's start. We'll start with this top left-hand entry called a pivot entry. And we're going to use that to get rid of the entries below it in its column. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to add or subtract multiples of that first row to the second and third rows. Right. So our second row is going to be the second row that currently is plus three times row one. And our new row three, which I'll write here, will be the old row three plus two times row one. All right, so what happens when we do that? What are we going to get? The first row stays where it is. One, two, four, with a 10. And now we're taking this row and adding three times the first row. So minus three plus three is zero. Three plus six, we have to take three times this entry, is nine. 15 plus 3 times 4 is 15 plus 12, that's 27. And on the right-hand side, 15 plus 3 times 10 is 15 plus 30, that's 45. All right, good, that's the second row. And now the third row, we're taking this third row and adding twice the first row to get a zero here. Minus 1 plus twice 2 is a total of 3. And 1 plus twice 4 is a total of 9. On the right-hand side, minus 5 plus 2 times 10 is altogether 15. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now we're going to shift our attention to the second and third rows. And uh, we're going to start by taking this second row and dividing it by 9 so that its uh, leading entry there is just uh, 1. And while we're at it, we might as well remove the factor of 3 in the bottom row. Remember, we can at any time multiply a row by a constant, a non-zero constant, to get rid of factors and simplify the corresponding equation. All right, so we'll go over here. And uh, so we'll take uh, row 2 equals 1 ninth of the current row 2. And our new row 3 will be 1 third of the current row 3. All right, so that gives us 1, 2, 4, and 10. And then 0 divided by 9, 1, 3, and 5. And divide the row 3 by 3, we get 0, 1, 3, and 5. All right, so now we're at the next step of row reduction, where we're going to look at this entry as a pivot entry. 
So we've moved from this one up here to one down and over to the right. This is the first non-zero entry in this second row. And we're going to use it to get rid of the one below it. So we're going to replace row three now with row three minus row one, minus row two, rather. And what will that give us? Row one stays where it is, one, two, four, 10. Row two stays where it is, zero, one, three, five. And now this third row minus the second row, we're just gonna get a row of zeros. This matrix is now in row echelon form because the first entries in each row, here they are right here, these are the leading entries, are staggered successively below and to the right of each other. And all the zero rows are at the bottom of the matrix. So it's in row echelon form. And now we want to go further, so we want to uh, get into fully reduced row echelon form. And that means we're going to have to do what's sometimes called back substitution. We're going to have to go up to get rid of the things which are above our pivot entries. Not just below, but above as well. So we're going to be looking at this one here and going to try to get rid of that two above it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take row uh, one and it's going to be replaced with row one minus two times row two. So here, we're going to leave row two where it is, one, three, five, zero. And we're going to leave the bottom row where it is. And we're going to take this first row and subtract twice row two. So we've got one there. And then the two minus two times one is zero. And four minus two times three is minus two. And 10 minus two times five is zero. All right, so at this stage here, we have everything in fully reduced row echelon form. So we have the leading entries are all one. The leading entries are staggered successively below and to the right of each other. And there is nothing but zeros in each one of those leading columns. They're the columns containing our leading entries. And this one here is a non-leading column on the left-hand side. There, that one is a non-leading column. All right, so what about solutions now? We can more or less read off solutions to the original system. And I remind you that the variables corresponding to the columns were x1, x2, and x3. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a parameter. One parameter for each non-leading column. We have one non-leading column right here, and we're going to introduce a parameter for that. So this column here, we're going to set x3 equal to lambda, okay? That's going to be a parameter, and we're going to express x1 and x2 in terms of that parameter lambda. So the first equation would read x1 minus 2 lambda equals 0. All right, if we set x3 equal to lambda, that's what it reads. The second equation would read x2 plus 3 lambda equals 5. And the third equation is 0 equals 0, which doesn't tell us anything. So x3 is just the parameter lambda that we've introduced. And so we see that the solutions can be written as x1, x2, x3 equals, in terms of lambda, 2 lambda, 5 minus 3 lambda, and lambda. And that is a description of all the solutions of this original system. So you take any choice of lambda you like, for example, lambda equals 1, 
and you plug that in here and you will get a solution to the system. You take another value of lambda, say lambda equals minus 4, you plug that into here, you can get another solution to the system. So geometrically what we have is that the three equations, which represent three planes in three-dimensional space, meet in a line. And that line is described parametrically exactly this way.